This video on file analysis is a continuation of the case management video I have on autopsy. So in this video we're going to take a look at an existing case and look at the file analysis tool that we have available for autopsy. To begin with I'll click on open case. You can see I currently have a case in here. We're going to go ahead and choose OK for that. And I've currently got a host which is from the office desktop. We're going to go ahead and hit OK. And we've got an image for that as well so let's go ahead and hit analyze. So now we're going to work with the tool file analysis, which is up here. And we're going to take a look at that image that we've currently got loaded for our host in our case here. The left-hand side, you can see here we've got a directory seek. Now up here in the right-hand corner, we've got our file browser that's built in, our directory list that's built into autopsy here. If I scroll down, you'll see this is the root directory of my hard drive. Now this was a hard drive taken from a Windows XP computer, and so this is pretty much the root directory uh, and you can see that I've got several of the folders like Windows, Program Files, and you'll find the common folders like Documents and Settings and so forth. So I could navigate using the file directory that's built in here or the directory browser that's built in to Autopsy. Over here on the left hand side, let's take a look at some of the tools or options that we have. This first path, part has a path that allows us to quickly view a particular section. So if you're used to finding, finding something such as the Documents and Settings, uh, folders, we can go ahead and hit view, and rather than looking for it and browsing for it here in our directory, this file path allows us to quickly, easily access that directory. And so now that I'm in the documents and settings, you can see I currently have a few users in here, the all users, the default users, and you can see there's one actual account that was created on this computer, it was called student itself. So this is what the first tool allows us to do. If I go down a little bit farther, I'm going to go ahead and click on uh, this next text box which is for the file name search and this is going to allow us to find files based on names only. It will not be looking at the metadata or anything similar to that so it's just going to be based on file names itself. And So now if I go ahead and type in for instance let's just search for a JPEG file. If I type in just .jpg and hit enter or search it's going to pull up all of the JPEG files uh, within my computer and so you're going to see I've got all these different files uh, all over the place. Now it did not go to the, just the documents and settings directory where I was in. This is going to search the entire directory. So you can see the C documents and settings here. When I scroll down a little bit farther, you're going to see uh, I'm going to pull files from other locations like C program files and if I keep going down farther, C windows and so forth. So this is going to pull it from different directories as well. This is going to search my entire image for JPEGs. And for instance, if I type in some other ones like .doc should pull up all the old Word files that used to be created in Microsoft. So I can see quite a few different things that are available. And I'll just do one more .gif and we'll go ahead and search for just the .gifs. And so finding files based on the file extension is pretty easy here. I'm going to do one more thing and we're going to go ahead and use the caret key, the shift 6 uh, for most keyboards, the caret. And we're going to go ahead and type in uh, just VER. I just want to show you what this option will do. This is actually going to search by um, files that begin with V, E, and R. And of course you can adjust uh, the amount of letters and so forth. But if I hit search now, it's going to go through and find everything that begins with a V, E, and R. And so if you take a look, there's a verisign.bitmap file, a version. And I can go down through the list and find all the files that begin with those letters. And so you can get more specific by adding more letters or cut it back to just a V if I wanted all the files to begin with the letter V. So that's another quick little uh, search tool that we've got available for us just to find file names. I'm going to scroll down a little bit farther here and I've got the All Deleted Files button. So I'm going to go ahead and click on All Deleted Files. Now you're going to see it says Waiting for Localhost and then Transferring, transferring Data from the Localhost. This will take some time depending on the size of your image. And so I'm going to go ahead and let this load up. Now that we're looking at our deleted files, you're going to notice two different colors of red uh, as you scroll down through these. There's going to be a lighter color and then a darker color red. The lighter color is going to indicate that the file has actually been deleted and the space that's available on the hard drive has not been reallocated for another file. And So that's the lighter color red. This is a good indication that the file may have recently been deleted or uh, that the file is still intact. Now the darker color red is going to let, let, lead us to believe that the file has already been reallocated and that the data within that file may be corrupted and so it may take quite a bit of analysis to take a look at those files and rebuild the structures or rebuild some of the data from an old file that used to be existent uh, within our hard drive. So these are looking at the two different files that we have within 
the deleted files. One more thing that I want to take a look at here on the left hand side is the expanded directories now. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the expanded directories. And what this is going to do is it's going to give us all of our file paths. Now this is a little cumbersome to look at and try to understand by looking at all these plus symbols that we see everywhere, but this is going to let us know that the first plus symbol means it's going to be within one uh, directory of our hierarchy and it's going to keep going down and you'll see the two pluses and so forth. So it keeps working ourselves down within the hierarchical structure of our folders. And so you can kind of go through and see all the different folders and files that are there. Um, rather than using the expanded view, uh, you could always come back here to the C drive, click on view, and we can go ahead and reset everything back to our original, which is going to be at the root of our directory, and kind of navigate if you know what you're looking for within this particular section. And so now let's scroll to the top here, and we're going to take a look at some of the headings here for my file browser, my directory browser that I have. The delete is going to indicate that the file is deleted if there's a checkbox. I've got type and I've got the DIR and then the N. The DIR is what our file structure tells us this should be, whether it's a file or a directory. N is what's going to be read from our metadata uh, as to whether it's a file or a directory. Now most of the cases are going to be exactly the same thing. If we have a deleted file that's been reallocated, you may see you know, a file on one side, maybe directory written on the other side, which indicates that, of course, the file has been changed quite a bit. Uh, so now we're going to look at the name. You can see the names that we have available for us as well within the files. Now the written time is going to let us know when the file was actually last written to, and they give us a timestamp for that. And then we've also got the access time, which is going to indicate the last time the file was accessed. And then the change time, which is again going to be the last time the file was changed or written to. And this is a, a modification within the metadata. So all these are usually the same time that you'll see. Uh, rarely will you see them changed or different. The size is going to be recorded in bytes, so this is 2,560 bytes. The user ID is going to let us know who the user is assigned for this particular file or object, and then we've also got the group ID, which is going to let us know what group was assigned to it. The meta here is going to link us to the actual metadata, and if I click on this, this is going to go ahead and bring up uh, the metadata or meta information for this particular file. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit back. And there's one more link that I want to click on for this particular file. So if I click on here uh, on the actual file name itself, it's going to go ahead and display for us down here at the bottom information about the particular file. And of course, I've got the ASCII report here. So it's going to pull up any of the ASCII information we can pull out of this particular file. If I click on the hex, it's going to give us the hex layout or the hex information for this particular file as, of, as it was written to the hard drive. As you can see here, I've got a small hex editor that I can use to view information about the particular file. And then if there's anything that ASCII can pull out, any strings they can pull out from this, it'll be displayed here for us as well. I do have also the export option, which I can export this particular file. So if I choose export, I can choose to go ahead and save this file. And let's see, I'll go ahead and save that to the desktop. And I'll go ahead and hit save. And what you're going to see here is the file is actually saved to my desktop. So I'm going to minimize this and you'll see here is the file there as it was exported from my image to another location. And then the last option is the add note option, which if I click add note, this is going to give us the ability, excuse me, the ability to add notes to a particular file of interest. So this file is of interest. And I'll go ahead and say OK. And now I can go ahead and you can see the note here was listed for that. So I can choose view notes. And this is all the notes that I currently have. And I'll show you where that location is here very shortly. I'm going to go ahead and close this. And let's go ahead now. And we'll close this here as well. There we go. Now we're back to our file analysis as well. One last thing I want to pull out here is this generate MD5 list of files. Now what this is going to do is create an MD5 hash of all the files that I'm currently um, seeing within this directory that I have open. So if I choose generate MD5 list now, this is going to go ahead and generate a list of all of the hashes or MD5 hashes for every file within my C root directory. Now it's not going to go within directories, it's not recursive, um, but it is going to go ahead and give me the files that are currently loaded there. So I can use this for some kind of comparison or some kind of benchmarking to existing files to try to find some files of interest for a crime or for our forensics. I'll go ahead and close that 
And let's go ahead now, and I'm going to close out of this, and we're going to take a look at where the nodes are stored. If I come back here to this window, where my host is and the images, you can see that I've got a View Notes button. This View Notes button is going to give us the area or the location of all the notes that I currently have for this particular image. I'll go ahead and hit Close. And this concludes the video on the file analysis for a host or an image file with Autopsy.